Hello friends, welcome to the class of high voltage engineering. So today I am going to discuss about the testing of circuit breakers. So in this lecture I am going to touch upon the uh, basic introduction of the circuit breakers and at the end uh, I will also discuss that which type of uh, testings are normally uh, conducted on circuit breakers to assess its quality and its performance characteristic. In successive lectures, uh, I will obviously discuss about uh, the high voltage testings as uh, uh, high voltage testing is the part of this high voltage engineering course. So I'm not going to touch upon the other types of testings which normally are conducted on the circuit breakers. Uh, to determine its uh, quality prior to the installation and its commissioning stages. So in uh, upcoming lecture series, uh, uh, you will get a guidance over the how the high voltage testings are performed on the circuit breakers. So let us start with this session in which I am going to introduce about some facts uh, related to the circuit breakers. So this will be a part of uh, this uh, lesson okay, where uh, one can get a basic idea uh, related to the circuit breakers. So obviously uh, types of circuit breaker, okay, you know the various types of the uh, circuit breakers. So if we are considering our electrical and electronics world, then there are uh, many of the cases where the uh, mishaps can be takes place. So generally it will lead, okay, whatever the uh, 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 failures or the faults has been taken place will obviously lead to the severe damage to the buildings or offices, houses, schools, industries likewise. So trusting the voltage and the current are not uh, the correct one though the safety measures are taken. So once the circuit breakers are installed it will control the sudden rise of voltage and sudden rise of current to help in preventing the uh, damages. Okay, means the accidents which uh, one can observe if Suppose electrical uh, failure has been taken place either at the building area or the offices or the houses, schools or the industries. So ultimately here uh, one can uh, uh, basically understand about the purpose or the responsibility of the circuit breaker. Okay, so as you know, as the name suggests circuit breaker, it means that it is the asset which break the circuit under the faulty conditions to prevent the hazardous damages okay to prevent the accidents okay that is the basic role of the circuit breaker so if we are considering our uh, uh, low voltage switch gears like we are using at our houses to protect our appliances against the over voltage and the over current situations okay like the mcbs miniature circuit breakers okay then rccbs so all these are the uh, low voltage kind of switch gears but when we are uh, when we are uh, thinking of our large power networks then we, we we need to deal with the larger size of the circuit breakers but in a root cause the operation or the uh, role, the role of the circuit breaker which you find in the switch yards of a huge voltage levels is similar that the perform uh, that uh, the role that is being served by your MCB which is installed at your house. Okay, so ultimately as the name suggests circuit breaker means the asset which installed to break the circuit under the faulty condition that is the circuit breaker and uh, responsibility is to prevent any accidents that may that may occur uh, due to the uh, 
uh, failure of either electrical systems or the electronic systems. So circuit breakers, if we are considering its roles and responsibilities, then in addition to transformer, we can consider them as a heart. Okay, uh, if one is considering transformer as a heart, then the circuit breaker can be treated as a one type of lungs of, uh, sorry, not the lungs, but the kidneys. Okay, you can consider them as a kidney, but ultimately they are very, very important into the electrical network. Okay, so circuit breakers likely considered as a heart of the entire electrical system as it prevents the accidental effects. So what is circuit breaker? So it is a one type of electrical circuit or electrical switch means it is a switching device that can be operated automatically or manually for protecting and controlling the entire electrical power system. So that is the pure technical definition of the circuit breaker. So in modern power system, the design of circuit breaker has changed depending upon the huge currents and to prevent from the arc during its operation. So based on this statement, the high voltage circuit breakers are classified as air circuit breaker where you have the two options either you can go with air brake type circuit breaker or air blast type circuit breaker sulfur hexafluoride based circuit breaker means sf6 based circuit breaker oil circuit breaker again you have the two options either you can go with the bulk type or minimum oil type vacuum circuit breaker Okay, so uh, I will show that when you can uh, uh, select the appropriate circuit breakers. Normally, the selection of the circuit breaker ideally be based on the uh, voltage classes. So we will see in upcoming slides that uh, uh, which type of the circuit breaker can be best suitable for the low voltage side as well as for the high voltage side. So let us see. Uh, let me play one video. Uh, which can give you the uh, basic insight towards this circuit breaker. Circuit breakers are an important and critical component of the power delivery system. They are mechanical switching devices capable of making, carrying, and breaking current in normal and abnormal conditions. During abnormal conditions, such as when lightning strikes a transmission tower, circuit breakers isolate the faulty components of the system to prevent additional damage. Ideally, in the closed position, a circuit breaker should act as a perfect conductor to ensure optimal current flow. In the open position, an ideal breaker should act as a perfect insulator and should be able to break the current instantaneously. Circuit breakers feature fixed and moving contacts that are housed in an arcing chamber and are opened or closed by an operating mechanism. The breaker's operating mechanism controls the moving contact to quickly open or close the circuit. When the contacts open, an arc is created due to current interruption. An AC arc extinguishes at every zero current level but reignites immediately after crossing the zero point due to the presence of voltage across the open contact. In order to avoid arc reignition, the contacts must be separated with sufficient speed and the dielectric strength across the open contacts must be able to withstand the transit voltage. Circuit breakers commonly feature an arcing chamber where the arc is intensively cooled by insulating media. Breakers are classified based on the insulating media used for arc suppression. The main four breaker types are air blast, oil, vacuum, and sulfur hexafluoride, SF6. This timeline shows the popularity of each breaker type over the years. Most breakers today are either vacuum or SF6 breakers due to their smaller size. Substation breakers are classified as either independent pole or tripole. They are further classified as live tank or dead tank breakers. Independent pole breakers feature a separate operating mechanism for each phase. 
while tripole breakers use a common operating mechanism for all three phases. Live tank breakers use a switching device in which the vessel housing the interrupter is at a potential above ground. Dead tank breakers use a switching device in which a vessel at ground potential surrounds and contains the interrupter and the insulating media. Regardless of the type, it is very important to test circuit breakers regularly. Regular testing can ascertain proper breaker operation in case of system fault and can improve system reliability. Various tests can be performed to evaluate the different components of a circuit breaker. Contact timing tests are used to compare the breaker's main and resistor contact performance against the manufacturer's specifications. The breaker's open, close, open, close, close, open, and open, close, open operations are timed in milliseconds and cycles and compared with the manufacturer's specifications to determine the performance of the breaker. Motion tests performed with a transducer are used to check the mechanism stroke, velocity, damping, and over travel against the manufacturer's specifications. Slower speeds can reduce the braking capacity of the main contacts, while faster speeds may cause mechanical damage to the damping components and cause excessive vibration. A breaker's control circuit can also be tested by measuring the trip and close coil current and the minimum pickup voltage. The measured values are then compared with the manufacturer's specifications to ensure optimal performance. The operating coil's current waveform provides insight into the mechanical and electrical condition of the operating coils. Any significant changes from the benchmark test signature should be further investigated. Contact wear is also another important factor that can affect the breaker's performance. A dynamic resistance test can be performed and the resistance chart can be used to analyze the breaker's contact condition during the circuit breaker operation. In order to maintain optimum breaker performance, the various tests described here should be routinely performed. Vanguard Instruments offers a wide range of circuit breaker analyzers that can help make routine testing safe, convenient, and cost-effective. Please visit our website for further information. So I must say that this video has nicely uh, uh, explained about uh, the some facts related to the circuit breakers and why why the uh, testing of the circuit breaker has to be uh, performed. So let us come back to our uh, uh, PPT. So let me show some photographs that. Uh, for this circuit breaker so you can easily identify that which type of circuit breaker has been installed when you are uh, visiting any uh, switch yards so here you can see that uh, how this air blast circuit breaker looks like okay this is minimum oil type circuit breaker this will indicate bulk oil circuit breaker so you can uh, compare the uh, design as well as the size of the minimum and bulk oil type circuit breakers okay so in case of bulk oil you obviously uh, seen the uh, one giant tank in which the oil is filled up okay the sf6 uh, circuit breaker so here you can see how it looks like sometimes uh, the other design can also be used it is like this okay this is again the photograph for the sf6 type circuit breaker the vacuum circuit breaker which you can see over the left of this photo which uh, appeared uh, as of now so on the left side if i mark it uh, then this is the vacuum circuit breaker and this is the another design of the sf6 circuit breaker so this is also the uh, vacuum type of circuit breaker okay sometimes it looks like this and uh, the uh, design is quite similar uh, to the minimum oil circuit breaker but if you closely look at the top side then uh, one can identify whether it is the oil type circuit breaker or the vacuum type circuit breaker okay so in case of uh, the oil type uh, over the top you can find one gauge which uh, represents the level of the oil which is not available in case of this vacuum circuit breaker So vacuum circuit breaker normally applied uh, for the uh, medium voltage switch gears. Okay, so range it from 3.3 uh, kilovolt to 33 kilovolt. 
so above this uh, voltage level normally the vacuum circuit breakers are not preferred so if suppose uh, you will be asked for the question that uh, to how much voltage level that the vacuum circuit breakers can be uh, used then uh, the correct answer is 33 or 38 kV okay above which uh, uh, it, it cannot be applicable because of the e economical constraints the ASAP 6 circuit breakers so for voltages uh, range from 33 kilo volt to 800 kV and above the ASAP 6 circuit breakers are used okay at a different pressure so if we are considering uh, the properties of this ASAP 6 gas then uh, they will be quite useful where the voltage level is too much large okay so here one example is given that if we are considering 132 kV circuit breaker SF6 gas as a pressure is generally maintained at 4 to 5 bar okay we need to maintain the pressure when we are playing with the gases okay for the 220 kV it goes to 6 bars okay for MV, uh, MV system uh, SF6 breaker uh, it can also be used but it is not practiced uh, due to its economic consideration the SF6 circuit breakers are made up of 75 to 550 kV with interruption current of 20 to 63 kilo amperes and rated current of 1200 to 12000 amperes so because of the properties of sf6 gas which possess uh, the excellent arc quenching property uh, highly electronegative in nature and the excellent dielectric strength the sf6 circuit breakers are popular for the high voltage applications and above the oil circuit breaker so minimum oil circuit breaker MOCB stands for minimum oil circuit breaker was used to uh, used up to 3.3 to 11 kV of voltages for the medium voltage and the bulk oil circuit breakers for the high voltages like 132 kV 220 kV or 440 kilovolt the air blast circuit breakers uh, normally you found their existence in extra high voltage systems where the voltage is 200 uh, to 220 kV and above okay and also this type of circuit breakers has been used as a, a generator circuit breaker okay so at uh, when you are visiting the plant uh, the uh, breaker which pro, uh, protects the generators uh, are the air blast in nature the air brake circuit breaker uh, they are specially used uh, normally where the voltage is too much low so approximately 415 volt applications you find the air brake circuit breakers now let us see the selection uh, of the circuit breakers so if suppose the system voltage is uh, below 1 kilo volt as said the air brake circuit breaker is the uh, better option but if suppose uh, the voltage is between 3.3 to 33 kV then one can go with either vacuum circuit breaker or the SF6 circuit breaker or the minimum oil circuit breaker okay mistakenly I have written over here uh, we place uh, 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 rename it as CB circuit breaker okay so generally as uh, if we are considering the economical uh, aspects then the vacuum circuit breaker is more preferable for the uh, medium voltages but if uh, the voltage is uh, is in between 132 kV to 760 kV the SF6 circuit breaker is more preferable as compared to the vacuum circuit breakers or the other types okay so here you can see that if the voltage level is between 132 to 220 kilovolt then uh, we have the three options uh, for these uh, for this transmission uh, voltage level one is SF6 circuit breaker second is air blast circuit breaker and third is minimum oil circuit breakers okay but the obvious choice is to go with sf6 circuit breaker because of the excellent properties of this electronegative gas uh, 400 kilovolt to 760 kv sf6 circuit breaker or the air blast circuit breakers okay so considering the economical aspects the sf6 circuit breakers are more preferable so let us see the ratings of the circuit breaker so circuit breaker as you know that uh, the duty that the circuit breaker has to perform is uh, perform under the short circuit conditions are first it, it has to open the contacts to clear out the fault then it has to close its contact, uh, uh, contacts once the fault has been cleared 
okay the another thing is uh, when the fault uh, fault occurs into the system for a very short moment of time the circuit breaker contacts must remain in a closed condition for a very short moment okay so it uh, has to remain in a closed condition on to the fault and third is to carry the fault current for a very short time while the another circuit breaker in a backup is clearing the fault okay so therefore in addition to the rated voltage current and frequency the circuit breakers have uh, three major uh, characteristic one is the breaking capacity second is the making capacity and third is short time capacity so normally in the uh, switch yards uh, not only the one circuit breakers are used for the protection so, so if the circuit breaker which is in the line fails to operate then the other circuit breaker has to uh, give the backup okay so the circuit breaker has to perform the uh, three duties it has to open the contacts uh, to clear the fault it remains in a closed con uh, closed condition on to the event of fault and it has to carry the current for a short time while another circuit breaker is uh, clearing the fault so uh, if you are using the backup circuit breakers then uh, this uh, statement is applicable to it okay so addition to this uh, rated voltage rated current and rated frequency uh, the circuit breaker uh, uh, nameplate consists of its uh, breaking capacity, making capacity and short time capacity. So when we are conducting the uh, short circuit test and the other high voltage testings, then uh, we are going to evaluate all this quality of circuit breaker to judge its performance. So let us discuss uh, the uh, different ratings of circuit breaker one by one. So here you can see I have shown one uh, uh, waveform which represents the short circuit current waveform. So here you can see this is the asymmetrical wave shape. Okay. And the another component is the symmetrical short circuit current. So your fault current consists of the two components. One is the asymmetrical component and second is the symmetrical component. So when the fault is taking place, when the fault is taking place due to the transmission line parameters R, L and C, uh, the fault current, the total fault current comprises of the two components. One is the AC, AC component. As you can see over here, it is sinusoidal in nature. So this is your AC component okay and second is the uh, dc component so this dc component is generally because of this uh, inductance of the line okay so here you can see that uh, normally this uh, 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 dc component is decaying to zero so once it will be zero uh, the wave achieves the symmetrical shape okay so <coughs> Uh, the short circuit current uh, uh, can, uh, gives the information related uh, to the different capacities while we are performing the short circuit test on circuit breaker. So it will give you the uh, symmetrical breaking capacity, making capacity and everything. So let us see uh, what exactly the meaning of breaking capacity. So breaking capacity, it means that what exactly it, uh, it determines that it determines the capacity of the circuit breaker which has to break the circuit when the fault takes place. So if you are considering the uh, waveform for the short circuit current then the breaking capacity is having the two, uh, two different forms. One is known as asymmetrical breaking capacity and second is the symmetrical breaking capacity. So one can easily define the uh, asymmetrical breaking capacity from this wave shape directly. Okay. So as you can see that uh, symmetrical, uh, symmetrical breaking capacity uh, it is uh, defined as the RMS value of only the AC component. Okay, here you can see that when the wave shape achieves its symmetrical shape, uh, uh, the DC component is zero. Okay, so it means that it represents only the RMS value of the AC component of fault current that the circuit breaker is capable of breaking under the specified conditions of recovery voltage. The aim is asymmetrical uh, uh, breaking capacity where you have to include uh, the DC component as well because uh, you see in the uh, waveform that the uh, during the asymmetrical uh, wave shape the short circuit current uh, contains AC component as well as the uh, DC component. So asymmetrical breaking capacity is nothing but it is the RMS value of the total fault current which comprising of both AC and DC components that 
the circuit breaker can break under the specified conditions of recovery voltage so the short circuit current okay which i have already discussed or explained that the short circuit current contains a dc component which uh, gradually reduced to zero okay as you can see in this figure so in the beginning the short circuit current is asymmetrical uh, because of this dc component when dc dies out completely the short circuit current becomes uh, symmetrical as you can see in the wave shape so breaking capacity if one is uh, reading the nameplate of uh, nameplate of the circuit breaker then it is expressed in terms of mva capacity so breaking capacity is nothing but it is calculated from this formula that is root 3 into v rated into i rated so normally the voltage in, is in terms of kilovolt and the current is in terms of kilo amperes so your breaking capacity uh, is in terms of mva so generally uh, generally the rated uh, asymmetrical breaking current is taken by designer as 1.6 times the rated symmetrical current okay one can also identify the difference between the magnitude of asymmetrical current and the symmetrical current so ideally the designers are taking uh, asymmetrical current as 1.6 times more than the symmetrical current another is the making capacity so making capacity is generally targeting to this point only this is the only so the rated making current is defined as you can see over here this is the peak magnitude okay the peak magnitude of the uh, fault current which includes uh, ac and dc component okay in the first cycle as you can see over here okay so what circuit breaker has to do during this first uh, peak magnitude uh, uh, in the presence of dc component that the circuit breaker must remain in a closed condition okay so the rated making making it means that uh, closed okay closed condition so circuit breaker context must remain in a closed condition at the peak value of the current which we can observe at the first cycle okay on to the event of short circuit okay so once the short circuit is taking place at the first cycle the circuit breaker contact must remain in a closed condition so it will defines the making capacity of circuit breaker so capacity of the circuit breaker to be closed on to a short circuit uh, depends upon its ability to withstand the effect of large electromagnetic forces okay because uh, as you know that according to the oersted's law when the current is flowing through the conductor the magnetic field is produced it means that the electromagnetic forces are generated so now if we are considering the short circuit current which is 8 to 10 times more than its normal rated value and the large amount of electromagnetic forces are developed due to which the vibrations are taking place and that vibrations may cause a serious damage to the circuit breaker contacts okay so the making capacity uh, uh, making capacity of the circuit breaker uh, uh, generally depends upon its ability to withstand the large electromagnetic forces created due to the short circuit current so it can be calculated by this formula root 2 into 1.2 into i symmetrical breaking okay so breaking current uh, breaking capacity so it is 2.55 times symmetrical breaking capacity okay so here 1.8 1.8 represents the dc component and root 2 is used to convert rms value of the current into the peak magnitude short time current rating so the short time current rating is based on the thermal and the mechanical limitations so circuit breaker must be capable of carrying a short circuit current for a very short duration while another circuit breaker which is in series is clearing the fault okay that is what we have uh, discussed in uh, previous slides that what exactly circuit breaker has to do when it is in service okay so circuit breaker uh, uh, must be capable to uh, carry the short circuit current of larger magnitude for a very short time while the another circuit breaker which is in series clears the fault okay so during this uh, uh, during this time uh, during this time the circuit breaker is all obviously experiences the large thermal stresses and the mechanical forces 
so rated short time current is the rms value of total current which includes both ac and dc components of current that the circuit breaker can carry safely for a specific duration so according to the british standard the time is taken as 3 second it means that the circuit breaker has to carry the short circuit current for 3 seconds of time in a condition that the ratio of ratio of symmetrical breaking current to the rated normal current is equal to or less than 40 if suppose this ratio is greater than 40 then circuit breaker must be operated after 1 seconds immediately otherwise it will cause a serious damage to the circuit breaker contacts okay so according to the british standard uh it is uh, advised that the circuit breaker must carry a short circuit current for a uh, for a time period of 3 seconds if the ratio of symmetrical breaking current to rated normal current is equal to or less than 40 second okay and uh, it must be operated after 1 second of time if the ratio is more than 40 it means that if the circuit breaker which is connected in series is unable to open then the circuit breaker which is in a backup must be operated instantaneously otherwise it may it may damage the circuit breaker or even it may damage the other equipments come in series uh, with that line whereas according to the american standard there are the two specific uh, time ratings one is the current which the circuit breaker can withstand for 1 second or the less and the another is rated for 4 second current Uh, which is the current that the circuit breaker can withstand for a period longer than one second, but not more than four seconds. Okay, that is uh, relate uh, uh, that is referred to that American uh, standard. Okay, so the British standard is suggesting uh, uh, three seconds. Okay, whereas the American standard suggesting uh, one to four. another is rated voltage okay so in power system the voltage level at all the points as you say that uh, as you know that they are not the same so it varies depending upon the system operating condition and due to this reason the manufacturers have specified a rated maximum voltage at which the operation of circuit breaker is guaranteed okay so this guarantee is specified by conducting the short circuit test on the circuit breaker the specified voltage is somewhat higher than the uh, rated nominal voltage the rated current uh, that is the rms value of the uh, normal current that the circuit breaker can carry continuously without any temperature rise in excess of its specified limit rated frequency it is the frequency at which a uh, circuit breaker has been designed to operate okay suppose the standard frequency if you are considering our case in india then it is 50 hertz So if circuit breaker is to be used at a frequency other than its rated frequency its effect needs to be considered the operating duty for the circuit breakers which are not meant for auto reclosing means the circuit breaker without auto reclosure the operating duty is uh, specified as o dash t dash co dash t dash dash co and other is o dash t double dash dash co Where O denotes operating condition, CO denotes closing operation, which is followed by opening without any intentional time lag. T, T dash, T double dash are the time intervals between the successive operations. So, according to the IEC, the value of T and T dash uh, is generally of three minutes, and T double dash it is of fifteen seconds. other circuit breakers with auto reclosing o dash dt dash co where dt is the dead time of circuit breaker which is expressed in cycles according to the british standard operating duty for the circuit breaker uh, without auto reclosure b dash 3 dash mb dash 3 dash mb where b denotes a breaking mb denotes making followed by breaking without any intentional time delay and 3 is the time intervals in minutes which you have uh, which is marked by the iec 
and circuit breaker uh, with auto reclosing B dash DT dash MB. So these are the uh, ratings of the circuit breakers which you certainly found on the nameplate of any circuit breakers. So in general way, uh, the ratings are obviously you can observe the make means the manufacturer's name, type of circuit breaker, rated voltage, rated frequency, rated normal current, rated closing voltage okay which is uh, given in terms of DC okay rated opening voltage if it is uh, a sub 6 type then uh, gas pressure okay total weight of the circuit breaker with gas okay then its number okay month or year of manufacturing uh, rated lightening impulse withstanding capacity rated short circuit breaking current, rated operating pressure, first pole to clear factor, rated duration of short circuit current, rated line charging breaking current, rated SF6 gas pressure, okay, rated voltage and frequency for the auxiliary circuit, rated operating sequence, gas weight, okay, standard, everything uh, you can found on the name plate of the circuit breakers. So here I have represented for the SF6 type. Okay, so here you can see uh, one nameplate of the circuit breaker which is manufactured in India by uh, Megavin Switchgear Private Limited. Okay, you find the type, okay, then the IEC, okay, the reference standard rated voltage, rated normal current, rated frequency, rated braking capacity which is symmetrical 25 kilo amperes, rated making capacity 62.5 kilo amperes so approximately 2.55 times more than the rated braking capacity. The rated short time current duration 25 kilo amperes per second, trip coil operating voltage 110 volt DC, okay motor voltage 240 volt DC, rated operating duty then weight of complete breaker 600 kilograms year of manufacturing okay the purchase and everything the another sf6 type breaker made by Elstom. okay so there are not many of the specifications are available okay lightning impulse resistant voltage switching impulse resistant voltage first pole to clear factor short time withstanding current okay duration of short circuit current short circuit breaking current symmetrical and asymmetrical both are uh, both are giving okay then making current capacity out of phase breaking current line charging uh, breaking current operating sequence and everything okay air circuit breaker as you can see over here the interrupt capacity in the form of the symmetrical one okay with instantaneous and without this MCR okay so uh, with instantaneous, with MCR and without instantaneous. So these are the specifications which you can usually observe in air circuit breakers, sub 6 circuit breakers, vacuum circuit breakers and so on. So test, okay, the testing of the circuit breakers are normally conducted to evaluate uh, all the uh, rated uh, characteristics or the ratings which you have, uh, which you can see over the nameplate of each and every circuit breakers. Okay, so considering the operations, considering the operations of the circuit breaker or considering the duties of the uh, circuit breakers, uh, the mechanical test, the thermal test, dielectric test and the short circuit test are normally performed. So mechanical test, so it is a mechanical ability type test which involves the uh, repeated opening and closing of the breaker. So circuit breaker must open and close at the correct speed and uh, has to perform its uh, designated duty and operation without any sort of mechanical failures. Okay, you have observed in the videos that uh, what exactly happens when the circuit breaker operates to clear the fault. Thermal test. So thermal tests are carried out to check the thermal behavior of the circuit breakers. The breaker under the test deal with steady state temperature rise due to the flow of its rated current. 
through its pole in a rated condition. The temperature rise for the rated current should not be exceeded 40 degrees Celsius for the current less than 800 amperes and 50 degrees Celsius for the normal value of current 800 amperes and above. The dielectric test, so this test are performed to check the power frequency and the impulse voltage withstanding capacity. The short circuit test, so, uh, the circuit breakers are subjected to sudden short circuits in short circuit test laboratories and the oscillograms are taken to know the behavior of circuit breaker at the time of switching in, during the contact breaking and after the arc extinctions. So these are the four basic types of testings performed on the circuit breakers to evaluate its quality. Based on these testings, one can also predict the life, uh, the remaining life of the circuit breakers as well. So uh, this is the end of this uh, part one for the circuit breaker in which I have discussed about few basic facts related to the circuit breakers. In the next lecture, from the next lecture onwards, I am going to touch upon the two different types of test. One is the dielectric test and second is the short circuit test. Okay, so in, pre in the next lecture, uh, I will discuss about how the power frequency withstand voltage test is being performed on the circuit breakers. Then we will see the facts again, again related to the short circuit laboratories to perform the short circuit test on circuit breaker to assign its rated voltage, rated current, rated frequency, uh, braking capacity, making capacity, short time current capacity and its operating duty cycles. Thank you.